Hi, my name is Gila Hogan. I'm the director of the Dr. Gus Samuels Trisha Summer High School Program for Girls. This week's Parsha is Parsha Kitavo. Um, in this week's Parsha, um, we learn about, we see what is essentially one of the last mitzvot in the Torah. There are a couple more after this, um, but that are related to the Sefer Torah itself. Really, the last, this is really the last mitzvah that we see in the Torah, and it's a mitzvah of Maser Sheni. Maser Sheni, there are three types of Maser. Um, Maser Rishon, which was given to the, to the Kohen. Um, Maser Sheni, which, um, which, was, which I, you, the owner of the produce, was supposed to eat, but bring to Yushalayim to eat. Um, and Maser Ani, which was given to the poor. Um, so the last mitzvah that we see here is Maser Sheni. And we learn that, um, that after one has separated Maser Sheni, um, there is a, there's a declaration to be made after mitzvah is done. Um, the Torah tells us, you're supposed to say before God, I've, and you explain, I've done everything, I've done what I'm supposed to do, I've enacted all my Maser, I've done all the mitzvah. Um, and then continues, Right, God, I've done everything I'm supposed to do, and now we ask God to look down upon us from the heavens um, and bless the nation and the land that we should be that it should be fruitful and grow. Um, this is I've always personally found this to be a very interesting declaration because we don't generally have declarations that we're supposed to make after mitzvot. Um, there are very few other examples. Um, and this is a particularly harsh one also. It's essentially saying to God, our relationship here is, well, we did what you told us to, so now it's your job to now say, do for us what you said you were going to do. Um, so I think it's a little bit more brazen than we usually get um, in our, in our um, speaking of God. Um, believing that aside, um, the pasuk itself is, a really, is very interesting. This word hashkifa um, does not appear many times in the Torah. It appears only a couple of other times. The Shorosh Shin Kuf Pei. Um, two, the two other times that it appears, um, the first is in the story of Stom, where God looks down on Stom right before God destroys the city. Um, and, and it appears as well in Mitzrayim, when God looks down on Mitzrayim right before, um, during, the, during the plagues that God brings on Mitzrayim. So this is clearly, until we get to this pasuk, this is clearly not a positive phrase. Um, it's often, it seems to always be either God looking down upon people, or there is another time in Bar when it's used to describe a mountain that looks down upon a valley. Um, so it's anything from high to low, and it seems to generally be negative. If God is looking down on stone and judging stone for bad, that he's going to not, God is going to now destroy stone, or God is looking down on Egypt and about to smite Egypt, it seems to me that this is a very negative verb, right? This is not a good type of looking. Um, until we get to our Pasuk and Tvarim, when now it seems that we're saying God looked down upon us for good. Um, and since this word does not appear so many times, it seems to be an interesting choice of, cho choice of verb. Um, so what, what is this word doing here? Um, so we could just say that, um, that this is just an exception, and that, um, and that it generally does mean to be look, look upon things badly, but here there's an exception, and clearly from the context it means good. Um, but the, the Psikta Zutra actually takes a more interesting read on it and says that actually what we can learn from here is that, is that God works in ways that um, God has powers to do both good and bad um, and with the exact same thing. Um, the Midrash says, Bo re'eg v'ratosha v'orino, v'davar achad mochetz v'rofet. Right, with the exact same thing, with this exact same ability of hashkifa, of looking down upon us, God can do both good and bad, which is not like human beings, right? With human beings, human beings destroy things with, say, a sword or other weapons, and then heal with medicine. Whereas God is able to use the exact same tool to both smite and do good. Um, and it's Dafka, the mitzvah here of Maser Sheni, which is able to turn this hashkifa, this looking down upon us, with bad judgment into good judgment. Um, so what is the question then is what is it exactly about Maser Sheni that gives that gives it that power to turn God's ability of Hashkifa of looking down and judging us from bad to good? Um, so Rav Hirsch has a really interesting explanation of the importance of Maser, and he points out he says that there must be a reason that the Torah ends here with Maser Sheni. He also points out that um, Maser is one is the last mitzvah on Sefer Vayikra as well. Um, therefore, it seems to be that the Torah sees Maser as an incredibly important mitzvah, kind of a basis of 
all of the entire Torah. What is it about Maser? Um, so Rav Hirsch explains that um, that Maser that essentially the three types of Maser all represent different elements of what the Torah is trying to get at. Um, Maser Rishon represents the Ruach, represents the spiritual side of the religion, um, and that's why we give it to to the Kohen, to our religious leaders. Um, Maser Sheni represents the Guf, represents the physical elements. Um, which is why we are supposed to eat it, although in Yerushalayim it's essentially elevating, you could say, the physical elements, right? It's my eating, but in a holy place. And Maser Ani is about Shalom, what he calls Shalom Hare'ah, right? Caring for the other um, and making peace with the other, and that's why we give those that to the poor. So essentially, so Maser represents the three elements, of the, the three aspects of the Torah, of the purpose of all the mitzvot. And Maser Sheni, he argues, it's not, actually stands out in the crowd here, and it's not just, um, because the physical element, the goof, is what um, is what enables the other two, which is what enables the spiritual side and enables the and enables the caring for the other aspect of the Torah. Um, and it's that physicality, it's the physical side that allows us to do those. Um, and that's why Maser Sheni takes takes such an important role, and why Maser Sheni is able to turn the Hashkifa from the bad to the good. Um, and as we are heading now into the Amim Norim soon, and we and God is going to be looking down to judge us for good or bad, I hope that we will all be able to turn the Ashkifa from the bad to the good. Shabbat